Hey, what is going on, you guys? It is your girl, Dana Patrice, a.k.a. The Black Fairy, and I am here with another topic. And today, we are talking about how it is totally okay for you to be the villain. We're going to get into it. But before we do, please like this video, share it, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell, okay? So that you know when I post new content. Let's get into it. <music> Yes, I fall in love with myself and I want someone to share it with me. I want someone to share me with me. all about how to be okay being the villain okay because honestly I think it's something that we have to accept about ourselves sometimes that sometimes we are going to be the villain in someone else's story from someone else's perspective in a situation that you may be going through whether it's a relationship with a man woman friend lover family member, whoever, that they hold their own perspective of what's happened, right? Two people can have the same experience and still leave with two different perspectives, two different things that happen. This person may have seen things that this person did not. And in that own way, they create their own story of what has happened and what did happen from their point of view, you know, and I'm not saying people don't lie, okay, because people do lie, <laughs> but sometimes they feed themselves a narrative where the, that places them as the victim and they truly believe that they are a victim of you. Um, this came to me when I was kind of thinking about toxic friendships and I wanted to do a separate video specifically on toxic friendships, but this touched on it a lot. And I felt to myself, you know, there was many times that I had to be accepting of being the villain in someone else's story. And, you know, I've had people go behind my back afterwards, like people that were supposed to be friends even, um, that would go behind my back and say things and, you know, simply because... I began to hold my boundaries, right? There was a time where I really let people treat me any kind of way. It's not really of me, but um, there's a lot that I went through where I became in a place where because I didn't want to be alone, I was accepting of certain vibrations and energies that I should not have been, right? But again, this is a part of life lessons. I think we all go through this as we evolve, as we meet people and create friendships, you know, and if you're older and you're watching this, you know that, you know, friendships don't last forever. Relationships in general don't last forever, right? Some are for small moments. Some are, <laughs> Some are just there to teach you lessons. Some last lifetimes. And, you know, whether or not those friendships lasted lengths of time or even moments. There are lessons to be learned. There are things that helped you grow, things that helped you in ways for you to become the person that you are right now. And let me tell you something. If you're saying, you know what, Dana? Yeah, you're saying this helped me become the person that I am right now, but I necessarily don't feel like I'm the best version of myself. It's not too late to change. It's not too late to hold your boundaries and it's not too late for you to choose yourself and your happiness. I'm in the midst of doing it. I and the thing is I it's it's a constant daily choice. And if you're someone who's been beaten down or felt like they've been beaten down or just been through a lot of trauma and maybe have had issues with depression and anxiety as I have and still am working through and using tools in order to do so, 
I want you to know that things do get better. Things are getting better. Just you watching this video and learning to understand um, this kind of aspect and perspective is going to help you out with that. Or at least I hope it does. Um, you can comment below and let me know. But allowing yourself to be okay with being the villain is one of the most freeing things that you could possibly do for yourselves. Let me explain. So here are some ways that someone may feel like you are the villain in your life. At least for me, these are some of the circumstances that I found myself in. Um, there was a point where, because I didn't want to disappoint anybody, I didn't really say no a lot. But when I did, right, when I did start to hold my boundaries and hold my ground and um, start to say no, and create boundaries like, no, I can't do that or I won't do that or, um, yeah, I'm not available to do that for you. Because I really used to shift things around to be there for people because I wanted people to be there for me and I thought that, you know, if I gave, they would give me. But most of the time, a lot of the times, these people just kept taking, right? So when I started to set boundaries, oh, I was the villain. People didn't like that. All of a sudden, you saw people's true colors, what they truly felt. You know, some adjusted to those boundaries. Others just fell the way off. They were so used to me allowing them to pretty much walk all over me. <laughs> you know, they took that as like something to fight for. Like, how dare you think? You could really see that they really thought that you were beneath them. That that, that was your place in life. And I don't know, maybe it's just me. But I've been through that kind of toxic friendship. And I've created that cycle time and time again. It was only when I started my spiritual journey where that shift came. And when I started um, really tapping in and really doing the shadow work. And I saw who I was becoming and who I had become. And I saw how the environment was so toxic that I started to work on creating more light within this, this dark existence that I was living in. And, and finding my worth and, and finding an appreciation for myself, my time, my efforts. And it really did show some real things about the people who I was around at that time. Um, it was funny who it came from and who it came out of. It was very unexpected. The people that you thought loved you the most Start acting like you're their enemy. Start talking about you like you don't even know them. Like crazy. At least that's what I experienced. Let me know if that resonates with any of you. Being the villain when it comes to holding your boundaries is nothing to be ashamed of and nothing to feel sorry for. I think you should embrace it. And um, in those situations, absolutely be the villain. Let them be mad. Let them talk shit. Hold your boundary. Hold firm. Because one thing I do know is that we teach people how to treat us. And when and, and it's not too late to start a new chapter and teach a new lesson. You know, that's what I'm saying. If you feel like you're still in that place or you still can't let go, it's never too late for you to choose yourself, to choose love and respect for yourself. Because once you start standing in that if they can't take it, spirit will take them away, right? They'll take themselves out because you'll put up a boundary and a wall so high that they can't get through, right? Because you're going to be creating this beautiful life for yourself. So don't let it bother you. But these are things when you that can happen sometimes when you start to choose yourself on your journey, when you really start to understand what self-love is. Another thing with creating boundaries is just saying no. Like, oh my gosh, I remember when I got my, my I've, I've had two cars. And I remember when I was started to say no to like not like driving people here, there. A lot of times they didn't even pay me gas. But you know, when you first get a car, you want to go, you want to be around. And then it kind of like gets old. And but the, everybody still wants to be around and do whatever and do this and run errands and you know, I was quite young. I'm telling you, this was like, you know, quite young. So I was still naive enough to think like, yeah, I'm going to be driving my friends. Again, this is at a time where 
I was really searching for some sort of acceptance and camaraderie um, between just people. Um, I was very lonely at that time when I was in this position and I was doing all of this foolishness. <laughs> And, you know, looking back, it was foolishness. Like, why was I driving around these people? Why was I doing all of this? But at the end of the day, I know why. I was lonely. I was scared to be by myself. I didn't want to be by myself. I didn't want to face myself. I didn't want to face my hurt, my pain. And I didn't, I wasn't ready to um, let go of what I thought I had because I didn't know that I deserved better. I thought this is all I could get. This is this is what I have to do to have love or what's what seemingly is love right so when I started to say no at 11 11 on the clock right spirits like girl talk about it <laughs> when I started to say no I was like again it it stirred up people's demons I became the villain. How dare Dana said she wouldn't take me to the mall. Now how am I supposed to get this? And that the same way you were before, take the transit, honey. I'm not the chauffeur. I'm not the, you know, and or, you know, like they want to, I know you guys are getting the point. I really don't have to do too much. When you start saying no, you become the villain in a lot of people's lives, especially if those people are used to you saying yes, Okay. Another time that you may find yourself being the villain in someone else's story is when you start putting yourself first. Ooh, they hate that. They hate it. They hate to see it. They are seething when you start to put yourself first, when you start to put your goals first, when you start to allow yourself to give yourself the time to figure things out, to do what it is that you want to do for yourself. All of a sudden, you are the villain. You are so wrong. You are, um, you are, you are a person that can no longer be relied on, right? People expect you to put your, your wants and needs on the back burner because they have wants and needs, Right? Again, I, I I was at a point where I had a lot of toxic friendships in my life. Um, I've released them all go and I've, you know, haven't kept too many friendships, to be honest. Um, they all ended up being kind of toxic. And then there's the ones that, you know, I probably maybe became the toxic one in. Like I said, it's, it's okay to be the villain in other people's story. I think there's a lesson to be learned. A lot of the times, from from another perspective, you may be. You know, I'm not saying that nobody's ever wrong. Like you've never done. Like I've never done anybody wrong, and I've never been an actual villain. I can honestly say that I have been an actual villain. But this is more about um, that journey into self. When you really start to choose yourself, especially when you are the type of person who may have been choosing others and what that's like. And I was just remembering how many times I was made to feel like I was doing something wrong just because I was doing what I felt was best for me, you know, and being gaslit in those situations. And I think many of us can resonate with that. And I just want you to know if you're in a situation like that, it's okay for you to be the villain. In fact, embrace it, okay? Embrace that villainous role of you choosing yourself, doing what's best for yourself, following your intuition and your guidance to do what's best for you. Because at the end of the day, this is your life. You have one on this earth that you're playing out right now. And it really is about you, your happiness you finding your purpose, or you just living the best life that you choose to have right here. It doesn't have to feel like a purpose. You can, you know what I'm saying? And we can talk about that too, <laughs> but that's another topic. Another time when I feel like we, sometimes people get labeled the villain is when you stop um, leaning into those gaslighting tactics, right? There's a lot of narcissistic people, and I hate using that word, um, just because I do feel like it is thrown around, but we all have, um, in some degree, some sort of, some type of narcissism, but also, um, 
sometimes we have varying degrees of that is like you may not be as narcissistic as you used to be when you were a teenager right and teenagers were super self-absorbed right <laughs> and in a way that's not a bad thing but it can get out of control it can um turn ugly and i think i think everybody in some degree deals with some narcissistic behavior from others um, around them and one of their major tactics their blah, 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 one of their major tactics is you know gaslighting you making you feel like you're in the wrong even though your feelings are valid or minimizing things just different actions that happen when you you no longer submit to it that makes you the villain because automatically when that doesn't work, I find in my experience with this, you know, once I started stepping out and not responding, not being um, led into it and submitting to the gaslighting tactics that I would also become the villain. It was like any way to deflect and to make me the issue, even when the issue is unreasonable on the other person's part. Like I said, like trying to make me feel bad for not taking you to the mall <laughs> for something that maybe you waited too long or because you thought I would drive you, you didn't leave earlier. None of those things are my problem. They're all choices you made on the idea and belief that I would take you. And that when I said no, that you would try to gaslight me and create a problem with me to make me feel guilty and then again give you what you desire <laughs> right so when you stop submitting to those kind of tactics as well you definitely become the villain again embrace that shit i love it now like ooh, you mad that i'm choosing myself be mad like i would love to be the villain. i'll sit in that magnificent stature and not give one damn you know <laughs> I don't care one thing for sure when thinking about you know this this particular topic of allowing yourself to embrace being the villain sometimes allowing yourself to um, really just be okay with putting up boundaries and saying no is that, you know, it's also a way to, it's, it's very healing, right? Um, trauma can create horrible, horrible cycles that can be terribly hard to break. I know for me, it was hard to break. I know at first I felt terrible. I allowed myself to get depressed. I allowed the things that they were saying to me because these are seemingly people that I cared about and that I loved tell me you know i ain't shit or turn on me and start talking trash about me start telling my business just because i would no longer submit to what they wanted me to submit to you know it sent me on a path it and it was hard to break you know because those things made me want to revert back to it maybe i am being selfish i questioning myself Again, that's where avoiding the gaslighting tactics come in because people will really have you questioning your integrity and who you are just because you're not doing what they want you to do. It's insane to me. When you are breaking a cycle such as this, um, it can feel like your whole world is falling apart. It could feel like that tower card is happening. The tower card is, yeah, it's striking you down, but it's also tearing everything down that was built on a foundation that was not steady, that was not secure, and gives you the opportunity to build something new, build something fresh, allow yourself to attract new people and new friends, because now you know what you're looking for. Now you know the vibration that you want to feel. Another thing I would say is 
before you jump into the villain role, really try your best to assess the situation. I saw a Instagram post, and I'll post it here, where it goes through some questions to ask yourself. And I thought these were great questions to ask yourself to really feel like, am I being the villain or am I simply just holding my boundaries, just being true to myself? Because um, sometimes, again, when we get into these situations, we can sometimes question ourselves and our own integrity when dealing with people outside of us who may be toxic. But I think taking the time to evaluate the situation, especially if it's someone that you care that you care about, um, you definitely want to make sure that you're not literally being the villain. <laughs> okay? Here are some questions. Um, I believe there were eight, and I'm going to post them here. So the first question was, is that really how it went? or just how you want to remember it. So when you truly look back on a situation that you had with somebody, think about how it went, not about how you felt, but how it actually went. Are you in the right, quote unquote? Can you see where the other person is coming from, where there may have been a miscommunication? It's worth asking yourself. Number two, how are your insecurities affecting the way you're viewing this situation? Sometimes it's our insecurities that are triggered during conversations and not necessarily what the person is saying. In the heat of a moment, it could feel like someone is taking shots at you, but that person may not be trying to deliver it that way. Sometimes people aren't aware that they're triggering us. Um, and sometimes only after reflection, you can kind of see whether or not that was the case. In those situations, I wouldn't say be the villain. You know, it's okay to admit faults and it's okay for you to... See things differently after, you know, looking back and taking a moment, especially if this relationship is one that means a lot to you. Number three, what parts of yourself do you see in the person you're criticizing? Do you see anything that reminds you of you? Can you see parts of yourself in this person? If it's someone who's close to you, maybe what they're going through, you know, has them on edge and, and yeah, they're being a total, you know, bleep, <laughs> fill in the blank. But, you know, you remember that when you were going through something similar, you weren't exactly the best version of yourself either. And then that thought will allow you to give yourself, give yourself and your friends some grace and some room to kind of go through the emotions that they're going through. I know for me, when my friend lost her mother, you know, there was a moment where she snapped on me and I chose to take the higher route. You know, I've been good to this person. They were going through a lot, a lot of family clashing. Mother just passed away. Her mother was everything to her. And I knew that this miscommunication that we had wasn't as deep as how she pushed it out onto me, like how she came at me. It was not cool. It was not necessary. But I knew that because of what she was going through, that in that moment, I needed to be her villain. <laughs> I didn't hold it against her. And I remember my friend was there. My other friend happened to be there and had overheard everything. And she was just like, are you going to let her talk to you like that? And I was just like, you know, her mom just passed away. And she's like, that doesn't mean she can talk to you like that. And I'm like, no, it doesn't mean that she can talk to me like that. It does not mean that she can talk to me like that. However, look at everything she's going through right now. She's angry. And it's just 
in a space where she didn't know who to trust, who was on her side. And when you're going through that, sometimes the other person can get shot. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> it's not intentional. And I was able to, it's funny because I remember we had a discussion one time because she went through a similar situation and I had to kind of share the what happened with her. She had no idea. She did not remember. And when I brought it up, she apologized to me. And I mean, I didn't need the apology. But in the moment, she was in so much grief and going through so much hurt that she didn't even know, you know. And she ended up being very grateful for me being there for her and all these things. But what I'm saying is I could see parts of myself in her that allowed me to show empathy to the parts that I was also criticizing, right? So if you're able to do that, and it's a situation maybe like how my situation was, you can learn to take a step back and not be the villain. Number four, are you concerned with being right or evolving as a person? That is an interesting question. For me personally, it would depend on the situation right? For instance, if I'm holding a boundary, if I'm saying no, if I'm standing up for myself, I'm evolving as a person by standing my ground, especially if I was the type to allow myself to be pushed around before, right? So standing my ground, I'm evolving, I'm becoming strong. Now, in a situation where I'm just trying to be right, where maybe it's just pettiness and so much money, so, so, so many things, right, <laughs> that it could be, you know, at that point, I'd have to, like, really draw back from being the villain. I'd have to be able to really look at that situation and be like, okay, you're being kind of petty. It's not always about being right. Um, sometimes it's okay to agree to disagree and move forward. It doesn't have to mean that you can't be friends. It doesn't have to mean that you can't coexist. It doesn't mean that I can't love you. It's just we just disagree and that's okay. I don't need to be right. I don't need for you to feel like I'm right. I'm okay with you having a different perspective. This comes up a lot maybe in regards to religion versus spirituality. I personally don't care what somebody else believes as long as it makes them the best version of themselves and they don't have any judgment for my beliefs, right? That's me, <laughs> you know, I feel like in those essences that those are petty things. Like, I can't be friends with her because she doesn't believe what I believe, you know? And it's just like, I don't need you to believe what I believe. I just need you to have a kind heart and a good soul and we're good, you know what I mean? Whatever helps you be that person, your best self, I'm here for. I don't need you to do nothing. I don't need you to believe what I believe. You know, as long as you're a good friend and you're loyal and you have those aspects, we good, you know? And I know that's not true for everybody else. So those are some things. Are you, are you being the villain in a space where you should be accepting of that role or not? I don't know. These are questions that you can kind of ask yourself to help guide you through that. Number five... What blame have you been placing on someone else that you can take some accountability for? So sometimes when we get into these situations with people where, you know, we can be the villain or not, <laughs> we have to ask ourselves, especially if we're putting a lot of blame on the other person, if it's actually that case is there anything that we can take accountability for for how this went down now i've been in situations where i don't think there ain't nothing for me to be accountable for and i hold my ground i'm okay with being the villain sometimes i'm okay with it i embrace it now like like i said i am i embrace my shadow feminine self who's going to stand up for herself and stand strong and and demand respect and love and kindness from those who are associating with her and speaking to her Okay, so I'm okay, you know, but there are times where I've been petty and done the human thing and, you know, had to snap back and 
just had to keep going and just had to be pressing buttons and just had to be just because I felt in my heart that I was right and I needed this person to believe that I was right. Even though, I mean, would it change the world if this person admitted that I was right or believed that I was right or shared this? No, you know, but again, I feel like this comes with growth too. Number six, okay, what hard conversations have you been avoiding with yourself? You know, sometimes we're in the villain role because we're trying to avoid something that we need to talk about, we need to address, something we need to heal. It takes shadow work to discover that sometimes. Sometimes we know exactly what it is. I know for me today, I had a moment, um, and I'm recording this on the full moon, and a memory came back to me. And I started really dissecting what was bothering me about this situation. Long story short, it went all the way back to my childhood self and the abandonment issues I had when my dad left. And how I felt so abandoned. And how I felt so unloved. And how... I really just dressed up how long I had actually been feeling these feelings that I still deal with today. I had to have a conversation with myself about that. I had to really dive into myself in that moment. I allowed myself to cry. I allowed myself to address it. I allowed myself to figure out how to get past it. I remember hugging in my, my mind and meditation, my inner child, you know, telling her it's okay. You're okay. You made strides you're gonna be just fine you can let this go you know i had to do that and sometimes you have to do that because sometimes our anger and us being the villain which can sometimes feel like a form of protection is really just spirits trying to get you to heal something that is required for you to heal in order for you to have what it is that you're asking for in order for you to evolve into who it is you want to become and instead of lashing out we have to go within and find out really what it is people really shouldn't be able to get under your skin and bother you all that much what other people think of you is really none of your business you shouldn't let it you should like shake it off Shake, 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 shake it off. Sorry, I went into the Mariah Carey. I know it was out of nowhere. You guys are probably like, what's wrong with her? But I break out into songs sometimes. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. <laughs> but you gotta shake some stuff off. You should not really give a damn. And sometimes it's hard because it's really ingrained in us to do just that. So, number seven, what is your most toxic traits you can admit to? Sometimes it helps us be more empathetic when we turn the mirror onto ourselves, um, and it helps us kind of step out of that villain role. But again, sometimes you're, you're just going to be the villain. That's what it is. In order for you to stand firm, you're going to be the villain in a story. And you have to be okay with that in certain situations. But again, if you are in confusion about whether that's one of these situations or not, this is one of the things that you can ask yourself about. What are some of your toxic traits? Do they apply to this situation? Is that what's fueling this situation? Or are you following an intuitiveness that's telling you that maybe you're being disrespected or disregarded or maybe it's a repeat offender? You know what it is, right, deep down inside. So when you ask yourself these questions, you can kind of try to align yourself better with your that source energy, with your inner and higher being, into whether this is what it is. And if you want to be the villain in this story, is it worth it? All right? Because we all have toxic traits. Like I said, we all have, you know, a little bit of narcissism in us. <laughs> so think about that. And number eight, is your ego getting in the way of your healing? Are you the villain being ego driven? Right? Again, is it coming from a place of where you're trying to stand your ground 
and maybe you in order for you to do what you need to do and to be happy in your life and to have what it is that you need to have and go to where you need to go to be the best version of yourself or is this a situation where you can't say that <laughs> where you know it's completely ego driven and you just don't like something again triggered by trauma and emotions it's really important to understand the two and the more you address yourself in those situations the more you'll find it easier to navigate you'll know because you connect further with your higher self and you begin to understand what the feeling is of the frequency right because honestly that's what it is we're exchanging frequencies and energies at once and once we start to become familiar with the energy of oh no i'm coming from a jealous place i'm coming from an egotistical place. No, I'm coming from a place of self-preservation. I'm coming from a place of standing my ground. I'm coming from a place of standing in my truth, being who I am, going for what I want. <laughs> There's these differences in the frequencies. And once you tap in and tune in and fine tune and you understand the feeling and you get to know the feeling, right? Because I think it's more of a feeling. We have to get involved more with our feelings when we are leading our lives <laughs> and interacting with others and also evolving into the best version of ourselves that being said tell me what you think about this have you been in this kind of situation where you've had to be the villain are you the villain do you love being the villain um do you have anything to add did i miss anything please be <laughs> please speak your mind below in the comments I love you. I believe in you. You've got this. As always, remain respectful, right? We share opinions, but we do not do the disrespect. Please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell. Um, yeah, I can't wait to talk to you guys in the comments about this. Um, talk to you soon. <music>